Okay, step three then is gonna tell us whether or not we're gonna get this credit, the more beneficial credit, or even though they're a child, they don't, they could possibly not qualify for the child tax credit. So does your qualifying child qualify you for the child tax credit or credit for other dependents? Dependent. It's, so now they're a child, they're a qualifying child, not an other dependent, but they still have to meet the qualifications to get the bigger credit or else we still get the smaller credit. If they're not a qualifying child, then the only possible benefit in terms of credits we can get would be the smaller dependent credit, not the child tax credit. Okay, number one, did the child have a social security number, an I-10 or adoption taxpayer identification number, an A-10 issued on or before the due date of your return, including extensions? Answer yes, if you are applying for an I-10 or A-10 for the child on or before the due date of your tax return. So we would assume yes there. If no, then the IRS doesn't know who this child is and they're not going to be able to identify them. You're not going to get a credit because you have to have a number. You have to be a number for people that, for the IRS. So was the child a US citizen, US national, a US resident alien? You can see publication 519 for the definition of US national and so on. Uh, if yes, then we'll continue. If no, you can't claim the child due to that factor. Okay, and then we're on number three. Uh, was the child under age 17? Note, this is a different age requirement because we saw, we saw before to qualify for the qualifying child, the age to be a dependent, right? Is the, is the child a dependent? We had the age test of 19 pushed up to 24 if they're a student. A student? A student. <laughs> yeah. That qualifies for the code. But here we're talking about whether they qualify. They are now, we're saying a qualifying child to be claimed as a dependent, but uh, there's another age test in terms of whether you're gonna get the bigger credit which is going to be the the you know the, the the child tax credit versus the other dependent. So and that's 17. So was the child under 17 at the end of 2022? If yes, then you continue. If no, then you can claim the credit for other dependents for this child. Uh, check the credit for other dependents box. So once they're past 17, you might as well kick them out of the house because you only get like $500 for them at that point in time, right? But no, no. any case, that's that. So that's that one. And then. So number four, did the child have a social security number valid for employment uh, issued before the due date of your 2022 return, including extension, see social security number later? If yes, you can claim the child tax credit for this person. Check the child tax credit box in column four of the dependent section on page one of form 1040, 1040SR for this person. If no, uh, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this child and so on and so forth. And then, uh, do, so then we're going to go down and say number four, which we would bounce, we would have bounced down to if the child was not a qualifying child. So that was remember on the first step where they are qualifying child. If it came out to be no, then the question is, well, they, are they still a qualifying relative that could still possibly allow us to get a credit for the, the lower credit, not the child tax credit, but the other dependent credit. So now they're not a qualifying child, but maybe they could still qualify here. So then we're bounced down to number four, a qualified relative as a person who is your son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, or descendant of any of them. For example, your grandchild or brother, sister, half brother, half sister, or a son or daughter of any of them. For example, your niece or nephew or father, mother, or an ancestor or sibling of either of them. For example, your grandmother, grandfather, aunt, or uncle, or stepbrother, stepsister, stepfather, stepmother, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, father-in-law, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, or sister-in-law, or any person, any other person, other than your spouse who lived with you all year as a member of your household if your relationship didn't violate local law. If the person uh, didn't live with you for the required time, see exception to time lived. So quite broad uh, of, a, <laughs> of an array here on, on the array of people. So, and who wasn't a qualifying child. So obviously if they were a qualifying child, they would be up above and, and we wouldn't be dealing, we wouldn't be down here on step number four in the first place. If any taxpayer, would, so for this purpose, a person isn't a taxpayer if the person isn't required to file a U.S. income tax return and either 
doesn't file such a return or files only to get a refund. I'm gonna get a refund. Of withheld income tax or estimated tax. You can see publications uh, 501 for details and who had gross income less than 4,400 in 2022. So here's the kicker. Here's the one that often disqualifies oftentimes because that's a pretty low income threshold, right? So before we saw we saw like a support test, you're, you're giving half the support to them, but here you've got this income test, so which is quite low. So you would expect that that could be like if they had W-2 income or something, over 4,400, then they, that could disqualify. So if the person was permanently and totally disabled, see exceptions to gross income test in that case, and for whom you provided over half the person's support. So now you've got, this seems kind of redundant. Redundant, perhaps. Here, because they say you have to have provided over half their support, and you would think if they were your dependent and they made under 4,400 and they were living with you, you know, that you, you kind of would, in that case, but maybe there are multiple people providing support and so on. So now we've got these two tests, the low income test and half the support, the support test. But see children of divorced or separate parents, multiple support agreements and kidnap child later. So there's always these strange kind of exceptions to, to those rules. Does any person meet the condition in your qualifying relative? So if yes, if they meet those conditions, we move on. If no, we stop. So was your qualifying relative a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, U.S. resident alien, or a resident of Canada or Mexico? So you can see publication 519 for more detail there. If yes, move on. If no, you can't claim this person as a dependent. So we'll assume yes. Really? Assuming you'll say yes? We're going to assume yes here. So then moving on, was your qualifying relative married? So if yes, seed married person later. If no, so if they were married, you would expect they would file a married filing joint return typically. So typically we would be normally be thinking no. And moving on, I uh, could number four, could you or your spouse of filing jointly be claimed as a dependent on someone else's 2022 return? So again, if you're claimed as a dependent or could be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return, then it would seem kind of unusual that someone's the dependent of yours. Although again, you could see how that could happen and whatnot. So if yes, you can't claim any dependents, complete the rest of the form. If no, uh, you can claim this person as a dependent, complete lines one through three of the dependent section on, uh, on page one of form 1040. And number five, does your qualifying relative qualify for the credit for other dependents? So if they meet the test to be a dependent, then you would expect that normally they would qualify for the the qualified dependent credit, but you could have some exceptions there, right? So you could have weird situations where maybe the dependent will still be claimed and give you some benefit possibly from like a filing status situation, but not actually qualify for the credit or something like that. So do they qualify for the credit? Number one, did your qualifying relative have a social security number, an ITIN, an ATIN issued on or before the due date of your 2020 run return, including extensions? Answer yes, if you are applying for an ITIN or ATIN for the qualifying relative on or before the return due date. If yes, continue. If no, you can't claim them. Number two, was your qualifying relative a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or U.S. resident alien? See publication 519 for more detail. If yes, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this dependent. Check the credits uh, for other dependents box in column four of the dependents section, page one of the form 1040. If no, you can't claim the credit. So there we go. There's the general kind of questionnaire. Hopefully, you know, if you're doing this in practice, then sometimes it's pretty straightforward if someone's going to be a credit and whether they're going to qualify for the uh, child tax credit or the other dependent credit. Sometimes it gets kind of messy. It's it's messy. And you it could help to go through a formal questionnaire like this to answer that type of question. Sometimes the software is often useful to kind of help you out with that type of, of question to answer the question. And even after going through the questionnaire, you could see situations where there could be still gray areas, such as does someone qualify as a student in terms of what they're doing in order to be a qualifying child and that kind of stuff. And questions in terms of joint custody type of situations where a child possibly uh, could qualify 
for two parents and, and whatnot. And then you've got separation agreements and custody agreement kind of situations, which is another area that you can kind of imagine often having to dive in the weeds on. 